Hello everyone and welcome to another episode, and yeah, I feel like maybe we should have labeled this one differently, but at the same time, I'm gonna get the point across either way. So, we're talking about the way you orient figures, you know, miniatures, whether they be big or small, whatever. Um, and the issue that a lot of people face is that they think, oh, I've gotta lean it backwards. Stop doing that. Stop laying your characters down. Number one, you're going to put a lot of supports on their back, as you see all the yellow zones back there. Um, you're going to, I mean, okay, you're going to save print time because you're laying them flat. And maybe you have a small printer that has a limited height, so maybe you have a super tall character, and you have to lay them down a little bit or lean them. It is okay to lean them a bit, but I'm going to demonstrate here, um, when I duplicate this character how the different surface areas can change just based on the way the character is leaning. Now, in all of these cases, their feet are kind of planted differently. And those are two different characters. And then this one's a different one. But like, let's just say for fun, we lay her flat like that, okay? Which I've seen people do. I really don't like doing it. And I'll, I'm gonna show you why in a minute. Um, the problem is, is that you create far more of a surface area per layer than you normally would uh, than if you were just using it standing straight up. And they're not that tall. These are little. I think they're supposed to be 72, between 65 and 72 millimeters. They're in the 124, sorry, 118 to 124 scale. So. Uh, about that size. Now, and now look look here as I drag up the uh, the layers, the slices. Look at the difference. Now the starting points are fine. You know you get little little beat beat you know little tiny bits there. Builds into the feet. Um, uh, roughly the same. Little difference on that side. Now look at where we start to see more material per layer, and how much more it actually starts to look. You're still working with tiny little bits there on the right. And then on the left, you've got this huge chunk that's starting to form in the middle because the body is laying down. So as it's sloping up to print it, um, you're going to start to see that it has to create the bigger chunks. Let's see, there you go, some more there. And as you saw as I was scrolling up, the chunks got a little bit bigger there in the middle as the middle of the body came through. Um, whereas the one on the right side, you don't ever really have more than just this kind of small surface area that you're using and that means a lot when it comes to print stress uh, and I might I might not have used that term before but I've talked about this a lot mass pulling you know the amount of mass pulling on your FEP um, with the force that the build plate is pulling back with makes difference on how you need to apply supports so the amount of surface area creating that that force from the amount of mass that's pulling does have an influence on how you need to support your figures and your parts. So that is kind of the sciency part of that. And you can tilt them a little bit here and there. Like I said, you can try to give it a little jag to the right or the left if you want to adjust the way that they're turned or the angle or orientation of them, maybe some of their parts. There might be, you know, some issues with the way they're facing that the parts become like a complete flat plane with the build plate and you don't really want that so you might try to wiggle them around a little bit you know to kind of get a good way to do it but one of the ways that I use to kind of show me how big my surface area's maximum is going to be is you can actually use the shadow that lychee slicer uses I'll show you that in a little bit more in a bit um, the way you would support these obviously would be the same. You know, you would just put, you would start your supports at the beginning of the print like you would anything else. And since these are small figurines, what I like to do is build a little ring around the foot. And that gives you a nice strong root at the bottom for your supporting because those supports are going to be really close together and clustered, which will make them nice and tough. And so as your figurine builds, as your miniature builds, you're gonna have a lot of um, help on the bottom where the feet are, and it's the bottom of the feet. So even if they get dimpled, which they will, you don't, you're not gonna care, it's the feet. You're just gonna sand them. You're gonna glue those down to something. 
So it doesn't really matter. This is this is why you you have to be smart about where you put your supporting. You have to make sure you put it in a negligible spot. So that was that would be how I would start with this one. Now obviously there's a lot more to go. You'd have islands and everything else, and I'm not going to go through all of that right this second. But just generally to give you an idea, if you are going to do this, start with the feet, work your way up, do it layer by layer too, because when they're this small, you don't want to go crazy, and you don't want to use auto supporting even as a guide. You don't you you, you use the the Leechy Island you know um, search system, but don't go crazy with everything else. Um, we'll take a look at a different type of character just to give you an idea. Like, you know, characters can be a pain in the butt. Now look at the shadow. And also look at the largest subsection of mass that you're going to be... You know, you see what I'm saying? You can kind of use that shadow. That shadow is going to be your guy. You're going to see that shadow and you're going to go, okay, the largest surface area I'm going to have is what that shadow is casting. And that might not even be all at the same time. This one, however presents an interesting challenge because of the stupid beak that's protruding from it, uh, the Plague Doctor mask, which is whatever, it's fine. Um, you really just want to be careful not to destroy the beak, uh, and at the same time you want to make sure that it prints. So don't jam a bunch of supports right at the tip. I have one there that's at the tip, which I will carefully snip off, uh, and then I have one underneath that will help support that and then I'll put a couple of miniatures to anchor those to um, help the rest of it because it's going to be floating for a bit and I want to make sure that it has the support it needs the problem is that it's a big island and it starts with a point anything that starts with a point is generally difficult I find that um, as an exercise practice Anything that starts with a straight point floating out in the middle, middle of thin air is usually difficult because if you put a support straight at the point, normally you're going to ruin the point, um, especially if you try to pop that uh, support off. Um, if you're lucky, it won't, but it's like a 50-50 toss. Uh, you really have to get in there and snip it, um, and you have to snip it like right in the, at the right angle and then make sure you can just sand off whatever's left don't even chance trying to pop it off, you know, pry it off or pull it off. Um, but this character, this is this was an interesting one because, as I was saying, the mass, uh, sorry, the, the, the surface area is already kind of large. So I was like, okay, what if we lay it down? Do we lose that? No, we actually have larger surface areas. So I was like, okay, this one's not going to work very well either. So she has a couple challenges because she's wearing a backpack, um, and that makes her really wide towards the middle. So we have to figure out the best way to kind of compensate for that little thick area. Um, we're kind of like right where her elbow starts on the one side, all the way up to about her neck. There's a lot more material than normal. So what I was actually going to do is I was actually going to tilt her to one side. And if you take a look at this, it's not perfect, but look how much less of a shadow I'm casting and how much less surface area max we're using in each slice. So you're actually getting a lot less mass um, pulling back and you're getting a lot less force pulling back. So with an angle like that, you're actually helping a little bit. This will actually help the ease of the print. Now it's not going to make it perfect. And yeah, I mean, it sucks that you have to kind of like lean it to one side like that. Uh, you, you, you're going to get a little additional damage on one side of the model that does have some detail. Just be choosy and careful where you place your supports. Anyway, even if we take away the mask and we present the same character in, uh, you know, the straight up and down, we'll see the ma the same, you know, shadow is going to be presented there. The only thing the mask did was create that pain in the butt for the islands that are going to become a peak. Um, or sorry, the beak rather. <laughs> beak. The beak of the mask. So again, I would do the same thing. Tilt it slightly to one side. That way you have that slightly leaned orientation and you can use that for this uh, type of character all the way through. Pretty much anybody that has a backpack, you can try tilting them kind of like a little to one side or the other. It really depends on, you know, other things. Like she has another bag as well that's kind of down on her hip there. Um, and her hands are in her pockets, so the whole arm thing... 
I hate having them straight down because then you have these shelves that go straight down. Now, what if we're doing something real big? Now, I've hollowed this already, but if you're doing something real big, you want to think same same thing. But if I were to lean her backwards, it would make this hollowing really bad because a lot of this, uh, the hollowing thing kind of depends on itself. The border, you, you know, your hollow, your edge of your hollow, your your um, the material there needs to kind of like rest on itself. So if you're leaning it backwards, or if you're like, you know, leaning her back to try to give yourself a tilt, you're actually going to hurt the way that the material is going to build because you really want it to build straight up and down. You want it to build as best as possible, like a tube almost. You want to kind of think about it that way because, that, you know, that's going to give you better draining. That's going to give you better build. It's going to give you a better, pour, better um, uh, detail and less warping potential. Um, you know, I, I've already done all the drain holes and solid, you know, blocking where I needed to on this. This is um, normally meant to be, I think, a 32 and 70, 72 millimeter piece. So I definitely made it a little bit larger. I think this is about 150, 153. Um, but you can see there's a lot of stuff internally you need to support too because of the angle. But she's straight up and down. So there's going to be less of you to you know less of you to worry about because the walls of it are going to support themselves in most cases unless you've got steep ankles like i showed you there right over the chest so again don't just lay them down throw them back 45 degrees that doesn't work for everything it's good for bases it's not great for figurines so stop doing it i've seen a lot of folks do it it makes the back of the model look like they got shot up and just and didn't make it it's terrible if you want to save yourself a lot of damage on the back of your model just keep this in mind sometimes doing them straight up and down is the best way sometimes a little bit of a tilt one way to the right to the left maybe a slight angle to the back but a straight 45 degree or laying them straight down no I would never recommend that unless the character was just an odd shape and then maybe you'd have to because of the way that their orientation orientation of themselves or their shape. Anyway, that is about it I have for this one, guys. I hope this episode was educational and you enjoyed it. Please let me know down in the comments. Hit that like. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring the bell for notifications on episodes like this, which I do at least once a week. And I know I'm going to be a little bit early this week. But hey, enjoy it, folks. And we'll see you all real, real soon.